Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 99. It's on the conservation of nucleon number. Nucleons, remember, are the protons and neutrons that we have inside the nucleus of an atom. And speaking of neutrons, this is an artist's depiction of a neutron star, which exists after a supernova. And what happens is there's so much mass, it squeezes, and many of those, if not all of the protons, are converted into neutrons. And so you're left with a star that has twice the mass of our sun, but it's going to have a diameter of around 7 miles across incredible density. So conservation of nucleon number and charge will always exist in every nuclear reaction and also in radioactive decay or nuclear decay. Remember nucleon number is going to be the number of protons and neutrons and then charge is going to be the number of positive and negative charges before have to equal after. And so in nuclear reactions the two types we'll talk about are fission and fusion. In fission remember we're taking a nucleus and we're breaking it in half or we're splitting a nucleus. In fusion we're fusing two nuclei together to make a new nucleus. Nucleon number before and charge before has to equal nucleon number and charge after. In nuclear decay, that's when an atom is giving off radiation. It's releasing a certain amount of energy. It comes in three forms or many forms. Alpha, beta, gamma are the ones we'll talk about in this. And in, in radioactive decay, nucleon number and charge before and after are going to be equal. Before we get to that, you should understand AZX notation, which is a way to write down the number of protons and indirectly the number of neutrons inside any particle. And so the X will be representing the chemical symbol, but it could represent a form of uh, radiation like an alpha particle. Um, Z is going to represent the atomic number and the number of protons. That's going to be the numbers that we see on the periodic table. And then A represents the mass number. So it's the number of protons plus N, which is going to be the number of neutrons. And so if we're looking at uranium-235, you know immediately that this is uranium. The symbol tells you that. You know that it has 92 protons, and then we know the number of nucleons is 235. So I could solve indirectly that the number of neutrons is going to be 143. And so remember, we're in physics, not chemistry. In chemistry, the electrons are important. So if we're um, combusting some methane in the presence of oxygen, it's the electrons that are being uh, interacting, and it's the atoms that are conserved. But now we're just dealing with the nucleus itself. And so it's not about the electrons anymore it's about the nucleons themselves and so let's start with fission which is how we take a nucleus and we split it in half let's say we hit uranium-235 with a neutron it quickly breaks apart into krypton-92 and barium-141 we also get three new neutrons as well and so let's study conservation of nucleon number and charge the best way to do that is to write out our nuclear reaction so I've got my one neutron before and uranium before then I got my barium krypton and my three neutrons after we also have to see the charge and we have to see the nucleon number so we'll write those all out in AZX notation and so let's start with nucleon number how many nucleons did we have before before the reaction, well, we had 235 in the uranium plus the one neutron, so we had 236 to begin with. How many do we have when we're done? 141 plus 92, so that's going to be 233, plus 1, 2, 3 neutrons, so it's conserved. The nucleon number before and after is exactly the same. We could also look at the charge. So what's the charge of uranium? 92. A neutron has no charge, remember, and so 92 has to equal the charge of the barium and the krypton together. It's those protons in those two nuclei. If we were to look at fusion, fusion we have two nuclei that fuse together, an example we would see in the sun is deuterium and tritium, and so those are two isotopes of hydrogen. And so it's hydrogen, but it has a neutron. We sometimes call it a heavy hydrogen. And so if we were to take one that has an ex one extra neutron and one that has two, those can be fused together in the sun, and we form a new nuclei, we form a new atom, we form helium. And so we give off one neutron, and we give off a huge amount of energy. That's the energy that you're utilizing right now. So let's make sure that we have conservation. So we first of all write out what are the what are the particles before and after, or what are the nuclei before. We had the hydrogens before, and then we have the helium and the neutron when we're done. We now write it in AZX notation, so it'd be like this. This is the deuterium, so it's got one one proton, one neutron, and then this is the tritium, one proton, two neutrons, and so is uh, nucleon number conserved. Well, when we're done, we have five nucleons to begin with. We have five nucleons when we're done, so it's conserved. If we look at charge, we had two positive charges before, two pos positive charges after, and so charge is going to be conserved as well. 
Now, radioactive decay is how an atom gives off energy through radiation. It comes in many different forms. The ones we'll talk about are alpha, beta, and gamma. They have certain amounts of energy. You could stop an alpha particle with a little bit of paper. Um, beta requires aluminum, but gamma has huge amount of radiation and requires a long uh, section of lead to actually stop the gamma radiation. But if we look at alpha decay, alpha decay, you're giving off an alpha particle. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons, so we don't have the electrons. So if we were to look at uh, decay of uranium-238, what I've done is I've written uranium-238 over here. This is our alpha particle, but what we're going to try to do is using the conservation of nucleon number and charge, let's figure out what we're left with after that decay. Well, let's start with a mass number. So we had 238 before. We've got a mass number of four nucleons after, so what has to be here that's going to be 234, so it's conserved. If we look at charge, we had a positive 92 to begin with. We lose two positive charges in the alpha particle, and so what's going to be right here? It's going to be 90. Once we know that, it's atomic number, then we can figure out that this is going to be thorium. So you can work backwards to figure out what is produced. If we look at one form of beta decay, beta decay is kind of crazy. It's when we take one neutron, we convert that into a proton, we also give off an electron, and then we make an electron antineutrino. And so if we were to look at beta decay, for example, of carbon-14, so carbon-14, you can see the number of charge and the nucleon number up here. So we're giving off an electron, so it's have a negative charge, electron antineutrino, which doesn't have any mass or charge, so we can pretty much ignore that here. So now let's work backwards. What's going to be our nucleon number here? Well, we didn't lose a proton, we didn't lose a neutron, we just converted one into the other, and so we know that that's going to stay at 14. We could look at the charge, we had a positive 6 to begin with, we get a negative charge here, and so that means that this can't be 6 anymore, that has to be 7, so we have uh, conservation of electric charge. Since we've changed that to seven protons, now we have a new atom. And so this is going to be nitrogen. When we do beta in this form, it'd be beta minus decay. And also in gamma decay. So if we're looking at gamma radiation, that's high en energy electromagnetic rays that are given off. And so this would be a gamma particle right here. It has no charge and it has no mass number. So let's work backwards. What's going to be the nucleon number? If we started with 137, we have to have 137. If we look at the charge, since we haven't lost any charge, we're going to have the same charge and the same number of protons and therefore we have barium again and so you may think to yourself well what happened where did that energy come from and so lots of times we'll denote that with an asterisk which means this is excited barium that means there's energy in the position of the electrons themselves and so did you learn to apply the conservation of nucleon number and electric charge to all forms of radioactive decay and um, nuclear reactions I hope so and I hope that was helpful Thank you.